across a piece of research that shocked me to the bone marrow. It said that 69% of health facilities in Nigeria from a survey said they could conduct deliveries, you know, of a pregnant woman. But out of that 69%, only 29% of labor rooms and delivery rooms in Nigeria had access to clean running water. And I thought, hang on a minute, 69% are collecting deliveries, but only 29% have running water in the labor room. So what sort of hands are they using to conduct these deliveries? And this got me looking at hygiene in health facilities. I mean, what is the point in going to a health facility to get well and then picking up sepsis and other cross infections, not because they have dirty habits, but because there is no water to wash hands. It's as simple as water and soap to end sepsis. And so I started to reach out for partners. I found Global Water 2020, who have an incredible body of research, research for every country. So in fact, my wash campaign, it's not going to be just Nigeria. It's going to be a global campaign where I'm asking all countries to actually, first of all, declare that hygiene and health facilities is a marker for standard of healthcare delivery in each country. I'm asking them to, to also commit to the WHO pledge to increase hygiene and health facilities in schools, in communities. And if we can just make sure our hands are clean, we can cut infections by over 75%. And it's such a simple thing, but you know, we say prevention is better than cure. And clean hands save lives. And I'm really hoping that this will be taken up by frontline health workers around the world. Because if the health workers who are supposed to be delivering health are delivering infection. That's certainly not what we want them to do. And it's as simple as there are five times where a health worker should be trained to wash their hands with running water and soap. But there's a bigger picture. It's not just about hand washing. So hand washing is at the health worker end. I'm asking parliaments now to look at their appropriations budgets. Yeah. In everything you're budgeting for that affects contact with a human, check to see whether water, sanitation, and hygiene is covered. So for instance, we just came out of the malaria meeting, and we're all talking about you know using drones to monitor where the mosquitoes are gathering in the lava. And I had to tell them that across Africa, it happens again and again and again. I go and look at a primary healthcare facility where we're running a malaria program, giving out bed nets, and on your way to the facility, you see a flood or you see a gutter full of stagnant water. And you know, inside that healthcare facility, we are trying to save lives. And just outside the door, we are breeding mosquitoes like a mosquito farm. And I think somebody else said today that a mosquito can fly four kilometers in one day. And so, you know, we now have to begin to make that link, the marriage between the environment and health, the environment and hygiene health and hygiene, and all three together. And you know, in these days of resource constraints, I think this is the smart link to make now where we can begin to cross cut, where we can begin to overlap the budgets to make sure that actually we, we cover not just the blue sky, we need to cover the basics as well. And hygiene is an absolute basic. Prevention is better than cure. Clean hands do save lives, and clean water is an essential of life. I'd say it's even more essential than power.